The Senate will come to order. Senator Murphy. Mr. President, I impose a call of the Senate. The Senate is under call. by the 24th of October, and I was hoping, just as my own selfish because little you self. you couldn't see the entire... No, because I just thought, well, I hope it doesn't wind up at like 995. Yeah. And that would have been like, you have to round it up to a million, yes. so... So, on the other side of the wall, which I wasn't on that side of the wall, yeah. they do the majority of the spending. Yeah. Yeah. I had the job, um, the important job of... Yeah. Senator Murphy. Thank you, Mr. President. I move that further proceedings under the roll call be dispensed with and that the Sergeant of Arms be instructed to bring in 
the absent members. On that motion, all those in favor say aye. All those opposed say no. The motion prevails. Members, if I could ask each of you to stand. So that we can have, uh, so that we can have prayer today. Uh, and today's chaplain is Reverend Dr. Mitch Kinsey, Ken Singer <laughs> from Arlington Hills Lutheran Church in St. Paul. And following the prayer, please remain standing for the Pledge of Allegiance. Let us pray. Almighty God, ground of our being, we pause to remember our collective humanity and the responsibility of this chamber for our communities. Grant us insight, prudence, courage, and wisdom as we work to promote the common good and to, sec to secure the flourishing of all our people. Keep us mindful of the demands of justice and the promise of peace. To paraphrase the prophet, may the answers not be blowing in the wind, but found in the collective collective and collaborative labors of this chamber. May we have tight connections to the hearts of our people so that we promote liberty and justice for all whom this chamber serves. This we ask with humble hearts and grateful spirits. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Members, thank you so kindly for standing for prayer and for uh, reciting the Pledge of Allegiance. Now the secretary will take the roll. Abler, Anderson, Barr, Bolden, Carlson, Champion, Coleman, Swadzinski, Dames, Dibble, Dornick, Dreheim, Draskowski, Duckworth, Diedzik, Eichhorn, Farnsworth, Fateh, Friends, Green, Grunhagen, Gustafson, Hostchild, Her, Hoffman, Housley, Howe, Jasinski, Johnson, Klein, Curran, Kroon, Kanesh, Kupek, Lang, Latz, Liskey, Limmer, Lucero, Mann, Marty, Matthews, McQuaid, McEwen, Miller, Mitchell, Muhammad, Morrison, Murphy, Nelson, Umuva, Baton, Pappas, Pa, Port, Pratt, Putnam, Rarick, Rasmussen, Rest, Seeberger, Utke, Weber, Wiesenberg, Westland, Westrom, Wickland, Zhang. Pursuant to Rule 14.1, the following members will uh, intend to vote under Rule 40.7, Wickland, Bloomington, Minnesota. A quorum is present, members. <laughs> members, as usual, if you want to follow along, you can go to the Senate agenda uh, that's, that's listed for today, Monday, February 6, 2023. The first order of business will be the third order of business, messages from the House. The Secretary will read the message. Mr. President, I have the honor to announce the adoption by the House of the following Senate concurrent resolution herewith returned. Senate concurrent resolution number one, a Senate concurrent resolution relating to the adoption of temporary joint rules. Signed, Patrick D. Murphy, Chief Clerk, House of Representatives. Members, no action is required. The Secretary will read the next message. Mr. President, I have the honor to announce the passage by the House of the following House file herewith transmitted. House file number 50. Signed, Patrick D. Murphy, Chief Clerk, House of Representatives. Again, members, no action is required. We will now proceed to the fourth order of business, first reading of House bills. The House files has been given its first reading and referred as indicated. Members, we will now proceed to the fifth order of business, reports of committees. Senator Desick for a motion to adopt the committee reports. Thank you, Mr. President. I move the committee reports printed in the agenda and the addendum be adopted with the exception of the report pertaining to the appointment and I ask for a roll call. Roll call vote has been requested and a roll call has been granted. Any discussion on the, menu, uh, on the motion? Seeing none, the secretary will take the roll.
Members, please vote. Senator Fung Her, for those voting under Rule 40.7. Thank you, Mr. President. Senator Wicklin, vote yes. Senator Wicklin votes aye. All those voted that having all those having the desire to vote, um, the secretary will close the roll. There have been 50 ayes and 15 noes. The motion to adopt prevails. <laughs> Members, uh, I'm calling on Senator Desick again. Thank you, Mr. President. I move that the committee report pertaining to appointments be laid on the table, and I ask for a roll call. Roll call. Uh, requested roll call granted. Any discussion? Seeing none, the secretary would take the roll. All those voting that had a desire to vote, the secretary will close the roll. Oh, Senator Fung Her. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Uh, Senator Wicklin vote yes. Senator Wicklin votes yes. All those having voted who have a desire to vote, the secretary now will close the roll. There being 52 ayes and 15 noes, the motion to lay on the table prevails. Members, we will now proceed to the sixth order of business. Second reading of Senate bills. The secretary will read the Senate file numbers. Senate file numbers 259, 816, 477, 801, and 71. The Senate files have been given their second reading. Members, we will now go to the eighth order of business. The bills listed on today's introduction calendar are given their first reading and referred as indicated. There's been some minor changes. If you go to page two of Senate bill introductions, Senate file number 1213 has been referred to higher education. If you proceed to page number 11, Namely, Senate file number 1306 has been referred to the Committee on Commerce and Consumer Protection. And last but certainly not least, if you go to page 13, you see Senate file number 1320 has been referred to the Committee on Human Services, and Senate file number 1323 has also been referred to the Committee on Health and Human Services. As I mentioned, members, um, the bills listed on today's introduction calendar are given their first reading and referred as I have indicated. We now go to the ninth order of business, motions and resolutions. We will adopt the author's motion as one motion. All in favor say aye. Those opposed say no. The motion prevails. We have some individual motions. I'm calling on Senator Fateh. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Uh, I move that Senate File 185 be withdrawn from the Committee on Housing and Homelessness Prevention and re refer to the Committee on Health and Human Services. And Senator Fateh, is this your bill and have you talked to both chairs? Yes and yes. Senator Fateh moved that Senate File Number 185 be withdrawn from the Committee on Housing and Homelessness Prevention and re refer to the Committee on Health and Human Services. All those in favor say aye. All those opposed say no. The motion prevails. Senator Hoffman. Thank you, Mr. President. I move that Senate File 214 be withdrawn from the Committee on Housing and Homelessness 
Prevention, and we refer to the Committee on Capital Investment. Thank you, and, Mr. President. And Senator Hoffman, is this your bill, and did you have an opportunity to talk to both chairs? Uh, Mr. President, I'm glad you asked that question. The answer is yes and yes. Thank you so much. Senator Hoffman moved that Senate file number 214 be withdrawn from the Committee on Housing and Homelessness Prevention and re referred to the Committee on Capital Investments. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. aye. All those opposed say no. The motion prevails. Senator Abler. Thank you, Mr. President. There being three ayes and two nays, the motion prevails. Um, so, Mr. President, I uh, move that uh, Senate file number 215 be withdrawn from the Committee on Housing and Homeless Prevention and re refer to the Committee on Capital Investment. And as usual, uh, uh, this is your bill, Senator, and you've talked to both chairs. Thank you, Mr. President. And this bill has to do with uh, trying to set up a housing program in, Hennepin, in Elka County for a homeless drop-in. It's worked really well in Anoka. And I did talk to the, uh, the chair of housing. They're eager to have it not be there. Uh, she was almost giddy, Mr. President. And then uh, Senator Pappas was a very willing uh, recipient, and it's my bill, and I hope it can become law. Thank you. Thank you, Senator Abler. Senator Abler moved that Senate file number 215 be withdrawn from the Committee on Housing and Homelessness Prevention and re referred to the Committee on Capital Investments. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. aye. All those opposed say no. The motion prevails. Senator Pappas, is Senator Pappas with us? Senator Pappas. Thank you, Mr. President. I move that Senate File 675 be withdrawn from the Committee on Housing and Homelessness Prevention and re referred to the Committee on Capital Investment. Senator Pappas, as, as usual, is this your bill and, and, and did you have an opportunity to talk to both chairs? Um, yes, this is my bill. Thank you. And I talked to both. I was given to me by the housing chair, so I guess she was talked to. <laughs> so, uh, Senator, uh, well. Yes, uh, she said yes. Okay, okay. all right. Uh, any discussion? Senator Pappas moves that Senate file number 675 be withdrawn from the Committee on Housing and Homelessness Prevention and referred to the Committee on Capital Investments. Again, any further discussion? Seeing um, all those in favor, favor say aye. All those opposed say no. The motion prevails. Senators, Senator Seeberger. Thank you, Mr. President. I move that Senate file number 910 be withdrawn from the Committee on Housing and Homelessness Prevention and re referred to the Committee on Jobs and Economic Development. Senator Seeberger, is this your bill, and did you have an opportunity to talk to both chairs? Yes, and yes. All right. Um, Senator Seeberger moved that Senate file number 910 be withdrawn from the Committee on Housing and Homelessness Prevention and re referred to the Committee on Jobs and Economic Development. Any questions? Any discussion? Seeing none on that motion, all those in favor say aye. All those opposed say no. The motion prevails. <laughs> Remaining under motions and resolutions, Senator Dizik. Thank you, Mr. President. Oh. I move to take up the confirmation. Oh, I'm sorry. sorry, there was someone else that wanted to say something. Oh, sorry. Uh, Senator uh, McEwen. Thank you, Mr. President. I apologize for the um, not being timely with this, but I would like to move that Senate File 1195 be um, taken from the Energy Committee and re-referred to the Committee on Environment, Legacy and Environment. And uh, I have, this is my bill, and I have spoken with both of the chairs of those committees. All right. Senator McEwen moves that Senate File uh, can I, 1194 95 be taken from energy and re referred to legacy and environment. Any discussions? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. aye. All those opposed say no. The motion prevails. Now remaining under motions and resolutions, Senator Dizik. Thank you, Mr. President. I move to take up the confirmation calendar. All right, on that motion, all in favor say aye. Those opposed say no. The motion prevails. Senator Dibble. 
Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Mr. President, I would like to move that the report from the Committee on Transportation reported January 11, 2023, pertaining to appointments be taken from the table. All those in favor of that motion say aye. Aye. All those opposed say no. The motion prevails. Senator Dibble. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. I move that the foregoing report be now adopted. On that motion, all those in favor say aye. Aye. All those opposed say no. The motion prevails. Senator Dibble. Uh, Mr. President, I would move that in accordance with the report from the Committee on Transportation reported January 11, 2023, the Senate, having given its advice, do now consent to and confirm the appointment of the Department of Transportation Commissioner Nancy Daubenberger. And Mr. President, if I could speak to the motion. Senator Dibble, you may speak to the motion. Senator Dibble. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Members, Nancy Daubenberger was appointed as the Commissioner of MnDOT, the Minnesota Department of Transportation, by Governor Walls in May of 2022. Uh, she had at that point served for three years as the department's deputy commissioner and chief engineer. And prior to that time, she had held a number of roles in the agency. And Mr. President, with your indulgence and members, I'd like to um, just give a really quick rundown of all of the positions in the time that Commissioner Daubenberger has spent at the Department of Transportation. I'll be very quick, but I just wanted uh, members and the public to appreciate how eminently qualified this individual is uh, to serve in this capacity now as the commissioner of the agency. So like I said, she's been the commissioner since March of 2022. Uh, prior to that, uh, from December of 2019, uh, she was the deputy commissioner and chief engineer. Before that, she was the assistant commissioner for engineering services, starting that role in 2015. And then before that, she was the state bridge engineer, um, and she began that role in 2011. And prior to that, she was the assistant state bridge engineer in charge of bridge planning. And that role began in 2007. And members, I just wanted to mention at this point that um, she assisted in overseeing what we call the Chapter 152 program, which was a program of going through the state and very, very aggressively identifying those bridges which were substandard or structurally deficient. Uh, and fixing those uh, on an accelerated basis. And that, of course, was done by this uh, entity, the legislature, in conjunction with, of course, the executive branch in the aftermath of the tragedy of the 35W bridge collapse, in which we realized that we probably needed to pay a little closer attention to all those bridges throughout the state, both state bridges as well as local bridges. Um, chapter 152, of course, was focused uh, on, on state bridges because that was a trunk highway bridge program. Um, supported by um, a small three cent increase in the gas tax, which we then bonded against and, um, and moved throughout the state and made a lot of progress. And uh, Nancy Daubenberger oversee, oversaw much of that activity. Uh, prior to that, she was uh, uh, an engineering principal in the traffic program support area of the department starting in 2006. Uh, she was a metro area engineer uh, in uh, from 2002 to 2006. She was the acting state bridge design engineer prior to that, um, and a senior engineer starting in 2000, um, and, and project engineer, assistant project engineer, et cetera. Before that, she was an engineer in the private sector. And members, I have to say that um, we held her hearing early on in the session um, and had a very, very good uh, and forthright conversation. Uh, members of the minority, uh, members of the majority participated in a question and answer. Uh, uh, Commissioner Daubenberger um, uh, showed herself to be a very responsive, very thoughtful, very imaginative, and very capable leader. Um, she's eminently qualified for this role, and um, I feel very, very good about our agency being led by someone who has such a depth of experience and such an appreciation for the breadth of what transportation means to all of us in our daily lives, what it means to our community, it means to our economy, it means to people in, in every walk of life who's trying to get to the things they need to get to to have successful and prosperous lives. So with that, uh, Mr. President, I renew my motion. Senator Zizinski. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. I would like to echo Senator Dibble's thoughts. Uh, I've uh, dealt with uh, 
Commissioner Dobbenberger uh, for quite some time. Uh, I've also made a call to uh, Senator Newman, uh, who's retired, and had a great conversation with him. Uh, Senator Dobbenberger has many, many qualifications. Uh, we're happy that uh, she will be uh, heading up the Department of Transportation uh, and look forward to working with her in the future. Thank you, Mr. President. Any further discussion? Senator Dibbo. Uh, Mr. President, I had meant to have forgot to call attention to uh, members on your desk. There are three letters of support for Commissioner Abenberger's confirmation uh, from the carpenters, the operating engineers, and the contractors. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you. Any additional discussion? Senator Dibble moved that in accordance with the report from the Committee on Transportation, report uh, a report of January 11, 2023, that the Senate now, having, ha having given its advice, do now consent and confirm the appointment of Nancy Daubenberger. All those in favor, say aye. aye. All those opposed, say no. The, um, the motion prevailed. And the appointment is confirmed. Senator Putnam. Thank you, Mr. President. I move that the report from the Committee on Agriculture, Broadband, and Rural Development, reported January 25th, 2023, pertaining to appointments, be taken from the table. On that motion, all those in favor, say aye. aye. All those opposed, say no. The motion prevails. Senator Putnam. I move that in accordance with the report on the Committee on Agriculture, Broadband, and Rural Development, reported 20, January 25th, 2023, the Senate, having given its advice, do now consent and to confirm to the appointment of Department of Agriculture, Commissioner Tom Peterson. Uh, Senator Putnam, I think we have to move that the foregoing report be now adopted. Is that your motion? Yeah, what you said, Mr. President. <laughs> I move that the foregoing report be now adopted. <laughs> on that motion, all those in favor say aye. aye. All those opposed say no. Senator Putnam for that third motion. Mr. President, thank you. I move that in accordance with the report from the Committee on Agriculture, Broadband, and Rural Development, reported January 25th, 2023, the Senate, having given its advice, do now consent to and confirm the appointment of Department of Agricultural Commissioner Tom Peterson. And to that motion. Thank you, Mr. President. You know, Mr. President, uh, members, today we have a rare opportunity, not just to confirm Commissioner Tom Peterson, but to respect a mode of civic engagement, of public service, and also, I think, in a sense, to learn from it. Tom Peterson is not merely an exemplary commissioner of agriculture. He is an exemplary citizen. Commissioner Peterson is a longtime resident of Royalton Township near Pine City, where he lives on a horse farm. He spent most of his life working with his family and his own horse and farm business. The Peterson show horses have competed at the Minnesota State Fair for over 25 years. Commissioner Peterson was appointed to be commissioner of the Department of Agriculture by Governor Tim Walls in 2019 and reappointed in 2023. Commissioner Peterson travels the state every year to listen to the farmer's voice and to build relationships. And it works, members. Everybody loves this dude. Specifically, and I know you're not supposed to read on the floor, but I got a list of people who submitted letters in support of Commissioner uh, Peterson's appointment. Minnesota Biofuels Association, Minnesota Corn Growers Association, Minnesota Ethanol Producers, Minnesota Farm Bureau Federation, Minnesota Farmers Union, Minnesota Grocers Association, Minnesota Pork Producers Association, Minnesota Soybeans Association, Minnesota State Cattlemen's Association, the Minnesota Turkey Growers Association. I was not kidding when I said everybody loves this dude. And I can give you actually a little bit more testimony. A Couple weeks ago, we held a listening session in Piers. We had a couple hundred farmers there. And I have never seen a greater example of civic participation, of nonpartisan concern, a group of people more focused on solving problems than on scoring points. And Tom Peterson knew almost every farmer who was in that room, and every single one of them knew him as well. He knew what they farmed. He knew where they were from. He knew the names of their kids. Tom Peterson, as I said before, is not just an incredible commissioner of the Department of Agriculture. 
He's evidence of what we should all aspire to, of public service that's about solving problems and building relationships. That is Tom Peterson, more than a commissioner of agriculture, but a citizen. Today, as we confirm him, we not only respect his accomplishments and state our faith in his continued work, we also recognize what citizenship can be. Members, I ask for your support for Tom Peterson's confirmation as Commissioner of Agriculture. Any further discussions to the motion? Mr. President. Uh, Senator Westrom. Mr. President, uh, I rise to uh, echo uh, the support for uh, Commissioner Peterson for the Department of Agriculture and can uh, speak uh, to echo uh, what Chair Putnam mentioned uh, about Commissioner Peterson. Uh, members, uh, in 2019, when uh, Governor Walls was first taking office, I've said this before on the floor as the former Ag Chair here in the Senate, uh, as Commissioner Peterson, Tom Peterson then's name was uh, one of three finalists. Uh, I've talked to some other committee members and personally called the Governor's office to urge him to support Tom Peterson as the Ag Commissioner. And members, this is an example of what the Senate advice and consent should look like. And it's an example of what commissioners should look like as they interact with the legislative body, and specifically the Senate, as we have the constitutional obligation or right to weigh in on advice and consent of commissioners. And my point is, Commissioner Peterson is the example of working with both sides of the aisle, not taking an agenda and moving it forward no matter who has input against it, and trying to find solutions. And Tom had that reputation before he was commissioner. And as commissioner, he has had that same style that I have appreciated and I've told him before. I've told Democrats, I've told the governor's office, and I've told Commissioner Peterson. But members, that is the style, that is the example, and I hope we can see that in all of the commissioners that come through from the governor's appoint appointments. There needs to be an openness to dissenting viewpoints. There needs to be an openness to maybe this isn't the only way we can do something, or maybe this isn't ready for prime time. And Commissioner Peterson seems to have that savvy to be able to decide and decipher and when issues that he might first support or bring forward to the legislature aren't getting the support or the traction or have questions raised about him, he's not afraid to back off and set it back on the shelf and say, we're not ready for prime time. And that's what the legislative process and the committee process is about. And so I speak in support of Commissioner Peterson's uh, nomination today and that we ratify it here in the Senate. And in parting, members, another good reason to support Commissioner Peterson is he's, he likes to eat pizza. Mm -hmm. uh, members, uh, you've probably heard the story, but let me just leave you with this story. And it's an example of how you can get things done. But last spring, as we were getting close to the end of session, as you know, tensions always get tight. We had the Ag and Rural Broadband Bill to finish, try to negotiate, as every committee chair was trying to negotiate. And my staff and I, we called up Commissioner Peterson, said, you're around later tonight. We're going to order in some pizzas, and let's try to hammer this out. And so members, uh, we got Commissioner Peterson and his capable staff in the room. We brought in the pizzas. We got Chair Sundin from the House and his staff, Representative Vang as well. And right over to my right, in room 206, we shared a couple extra large pizzas and sat there for probably six hours, hammering through the details that we had been stuck on on our bills. And that pizza, both Commissioner Peterson and I credit for getting the job done. And so members, uh, that's the way we do it in rural Minnesota. And uh, we've had a successful pattern to get this done. And Commissioner Peterson, I think, is the example of how uh, commissioners and how the interaction between legislative bodies and the commissioners should be working. And that's why I rise in support of Commissioner Peterson. I urge your support.
Senator Jaskowski. Thank you, Mr. President. I echo the comments of uh, both Senator Westrom and Senator Putnam. I've served with Commissioner Peterson as both a member of the House and of the Senate. Uh, I will tell you he was first and foremost about public service. That is what we should seek in our commissioners. That is what Commissioner Peterson has brought. Well before he was a commissioner, Mr. President, um, whether the Republicans were in control or the Democrats were in control, he was fixed on what is best for Minnesota. His attention was fixed on that. Um, he loves agriculture, he loves Minnesota, and he loves the people. Um, I would hope that we can uh, very, see a very strong level of support for Commissioner Peterson here. And Mr. President, I think we should have roll call votes for these. We did not for the last one. I'd ask for a roll call. Roll call requested, roll call granted. Senator Dames. Well, thank you, Mr. Chair and members. I, too, rise in support of Commissioner Peterson to continue with that position. Uh, one of the things I really admire about Commissioner Peterson, he and I have worked together for many, many years, and I knew Tom very well when he was with the uh, Minnesota Farmers Union. But Tom always said that he put agriculture ahead of politics, and that's something that uh, we don't see too often. And so I've always appreciated that when Tom's had tough decisions to make, if it was best for agriculture in rural Minnesota, that was going to come ahead of his politics. And I've always appreciated that, and I, too, support uh, Commissioner Peterson. Any additional discussion? Seeing none, Senator Putnam moved that in accordance with the report from the Committee on Agriculture, Broadband, and Rural Development, reported January 25, 2023, the Senate, having given its advice, do now consent to and confirm the appointment of Tom Peterson. That's the motion. The secretary will take the roll. Senator Hur, for those voting under Rule 40.7. Mr. President, I'd like, to, um, I'd like to report aye for Senator Wicklin. Senator Wicklin votes aye. Thank you. Those having voted that desire to vote, the secretary will close the roll. The motion prevails, oh, there being 63 ayes and zero noes, the motion prevails and the appointment is confirmed. <laughs> Members, we will now go to the 13th order of business. We're at the 13th order of business, announcements of Senate interest. Senator Hoffman. Thank you, Mr. President, and I just uh, bear with me as there's gonna be a, a few folks to um, say some words in memory of U.S. Senator Dave Durenberger, starting with Senator Abler. Senator Abler. Well, thank you, Mr. President and members. Uh, Senator Dave Durenberger was a fierce advocate for the rights of people with disabilities. As the Chief of Staff to Governor Harold Levander, he traveled to Cambridge State Hospital and he recalled, I saw a whole bunch of young men, most of them naked, some of them hopping around like animals, just warehoused there, and I never forgot it and I can forward that memory to a lot of my life's work. Senator Ress. Thank you, Mr. President. In 1972, Durenberger was the Executive Secretary to the Modernization of the Constitution Committee, authorized by the 1971 legislature. In reviewing those boxes of historical records, one can find dozens of handwritten letters from people with disabilities asking that the Constitution be modernized and all out-of-date language be removed. In the mid-1970s, Durenberger was an early supporter of the personal care attendant program that Leah Welch began in Hennepin County. They were lifelong friends, and he would spend time with her whenever Leah 
visited Washington, D.C. Senator Nelson. Thank you, Mr. President. After being elected to the U.S. Senate, Dernberger created a disability advisory committee and scheduled regular meetings with Minnesota leaders. He took advice freely and carried back these Minnesota values to Washington, D.C. The old hands in D.C. would remark, where does he come up with these ideas? <laughs> or they would say to him, we can't do that. It will cost money. In 1986, Senator Dernberger traveled north for a fishing trip. He visited with a young mother who had a child with a disability. He said, I thought I was going fishing, and instead I listened to her tell me about how Medicaid is a heartless program, forcing families to spin down their assets in order to qualify. Dernberger went back to Washington, D.C. and held a hearing about Medicaid reform. That young mother from International Falls traveled to Congress and was the last witness to testify on September 19, 1986. As a result, the Partners in Policymaking program was launched in Minnesota in May of 1987 and has led to over 29,000 people with disabilities and family members being trained and educated about disability rights. Minnesota now has over 1,100 graduates. Senator Pappas. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, Senator Durenberger worked on women's rights, then voting rights for people with disabilities in 1985, and was asked to co-author the Americans with Disabilities Act by Senator Edward Kennedy. Dave was specifically focused on gaining support of the business community to reduce resistance to passage of the ADA. During the signing ceremony on July 26, 1990, when President George H.W. Bush came out to sign the ADA, he recalled, the band struck up, hail to the chief, and a whole bunch of people stood up, and all you could hear in the place was, down in front, down in front. And I knew I was in the right place. I knew I was in the right place. Down in front, wow. Senator Hoffman. In 2004, Durenberger led the Health Care Cost Commission and it included disability issues in the final recommendation. In 2017, Senator Durenberger joined uh, Justin Smith and Dr. Colleen Wick for a hot dish panel during the reopening ceremony of the state capitol. And what's really true to form, Mr. President, is Senator Durenberger came to the meeting of the Governor's Council on Developmental Disabilities and there was a self-advocate named Robbie Reedy from Duluth and he said to Dave Durenberger, you're one cool dude, you passed the ADA so I could have civil rights. And that's what David Durenberger is about, Mr. Ch Mr. President. I just want to go to Senator Abler for a final thought. Thank you. Senator Abler for final thoughts. Thank you, Mr. President. And uh, indeed, thank you, Senator Durenberger, my, my mentor and my friend. And he taught me to work together. Um, and just as an aside, for instance, had the A152 gone on the bill, I would have voted for the bill last time. And so there's a lot of room, I think, that we can take from his example as we work together on some of these very thorny issues and do a good job for the state of Minnesota. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you for all those with their salutes to Senator Durenberger. Uh, Senator uh, Latz. Uh, Mr. President, I'm not part of the pre-organized salute to Senator Durenberger, but I wanted to add just a thought or two. When I was in college, I did a semester in Washington, D.C. with American University, their Washington semester program, and I needed to have an internship as a part of that program. So I reached out to Senator Durenberger's office, and he was gracious enough to accept me as an intern uh, for a semester. I did work at, for his health policy legislative assistant, John Tillotson at the time. Um, and the research that they happened to ask me to do, I later turned into uh, my law school uh, 3L paper, um, which ended up getting published. So it all started in Senator Durenberger's office. Um, and uh, I was always grateful for the opportunity. And he was always about getting good public policy done and not much about the, uh, the partisan conflicts that can be inherent in, in any political activity. Great deal of admiration and respect for him and that example. 
is uh, going to be sorely missed, and we should all seek to emulate that in the work that we do here. Thank you. Thank you to all who commented on uh, that, that salute. Um, and we, uh, we are still remaining under um, the 13th order of business. Let's see, am I missing someone? Oh, Senator Hochschild. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, I just want to make sure and invite members to St. Louis County Days um, at the Intercontinental on Wednesday from 4.30 to 8. We'll hear from a lot of communities um, and different groups and actually other counties from across the Northland come to uh, tout the projects and initiatives that they're working on. It's a fun event, and I hope to see as many of you as possible there. Thanks. Senator Pappas. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, Senator Pratt and I would like to remind the Metro legislators that we're having our annual Pappas Pratt Parks Pizza Party tomorrow from 5 to 6 in room 2308. And if any of you non-Metro members stop by, I promise we won't throw you out. And the pizza will have pepperoni, I'm sure, so, for, so we can stay consistent with the peas. Any additional uh, Senate interest? Seeing none without objection, the following senators will be excused from today's session. Lang all day, Housley from 11 to 11.15 a.m., and Jasinski from 11.35 to 11.40. Seeing nothing, uh, nothing further, Senator Dizik. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. So members, later this week, we'll, meet, we'll be back in on Wednesday for more confirmations, and Thursday um, for more confirmations. I believe we'll do Department of Revenue, Department of Admin, MMB, and um, Department of Veterans Affairs. So that's kind of the rundown for the week. We may or may not have a bill in there yet. Um, we'll let you know. Um, might be on Thursday, but um, for now, Mr. President, I move that the Senate do now adjourn until Wednesday, February 8th at 11 a.m. On that motion, any discussion? All those in favor say aye. All those opposed say no. The motion prevails. The Senate is now adjourned. <laughs>